Everybody said, amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Well, if you have your Bibles, you could turn to Malachi. <clears throat> Malachi, there are other uh, chapters in Malachi other than chapter 3. Uh, I know people get nervous sometimes when you just go right to chapter 3, but there's a, there's a lot of other chapters, uh, a few chapters anyway, in Malachi. Uh, so I want to look at Malachi uh, chapter 4 in uh, verse 6. This is in the New Living Translation. Everybody say, I'm listening. It says this, look, <laughs> turn to your neighbor and say, look. It says, look, I am sending you the prophet Elijah before the great and dreadful day of the Lord arrives. Verse 6, his preaching will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. I always kind of just uh, skimmed over this last little line here. It says, otherwise I will come and strike the land uh, with a curse. As I was uh, reading uh, uh, different uh, things along this, as far as commentary is concerned, um, it says that the hearts of the fathers, everybody say fathers, the hearts of the fathers are those that are established. It's not necessarily an age uh, group, although sometimes age does uh, you know, uh, communicate, um, experience, but it says that the fathers are those that are established in the ways of the Lord. Everybody say established. Amen. And it says that their responsibility or because of this anointing in the earth, that they were going to turn their hearts to, uh, the young. Amen. Or we could say those not established in the ways of the Lord. Amen. Can everybody see that today? So there's, there's a spirit uh, in the earth, the Holy Spirit, really, but there's a word here, and I believe this is a, obviously a prophetic word. It's a word for our day, but there are implications of this happening and this not happening. And uh, I was uh, drawn to this uh, just a couple of weeks ago where it says, otherwise, I don't know if you had that yet, yeah, otherwise I will come and strike the land with a curse. And we can see in this generation that there are, uh, you know, obvious signs that uh, there's a lot of challenges. Amen. There's a lot of things that are happening uh, that are not for the better, not for the good. And I think the remedy, according to God's word, the remedy for that is that the heart, man, glory to God, the hearts of those that are established in the things of God, amen, that they allow the Spirit of God to, to deal with their heart, the grace of God to deal with them, to allow them to turn now their hearts to the younger generations. Amen. Is anybody here? Glory to God. So we talked a little bit about that um, last week, uh, some of the statistics of a current trends. Amen. We're not saying, I don't believe this is. I believe there's, there is and will be a move of God among uh, this generation. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Glory to God. So uh, at the current trends, it says that basically uh, young people, the younger generations are leaving the Christian church. They're, they're leaving and uh, they're leaving the faith uh, as a whole. And I, I feel like one of the things that we were talking about last week, uh, Shelly and Jeremy Dodge and I, uh, you know, I feel like maybe I did or didn't mention, I don't remember, but I feel like in order to have them to stay, amen, everybody say stay, in order to have them to stay or stay connected to the plan of God, which is the local church, amen, that they have to have a reason to stay. They have to have uh, something that would compel them to stay, or they'd have to have developed deeper roots to keep them in what the Lord's plan is in these last days, amen, amen. I mean, no, oh, that's important. How is that going to happen? Well, it's not going to happen on its own. Amen? Turn to your neighbor and say, you have a part to play in this. Young or old, you have a part to play. Amen? Everybody has a part to play in this move of God in the earth. Glory to God. Uh, I said uh, a, 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 a pastor friend of mine that's been pastoring for a long time, he said this uh, years ago. I was on the, a phone conversation with him, and he said this. It really touched me, and I never forgot it. He said that there was a span in the Bible where Abraham, everybody say Abraham, 
Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were all, they were all together for around a span of 15 years. Amen. And I, I believe that something supernatural happened during that time. I said last week, uh, Shelly, as we were ministering, that Lois Toucher was here. By the way, it's good to have Cindy here. Give us a wave out there. It's good to have Cindy. And um, I, 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 I saw this week, I'm, I would look forward for you to be in here more. I think that's a power. I think you have a powerful part to play in this season, um, not just here, but in many places as the Lord fulfills this word, where was I just then? Lois Toucher said that she, she was speaking on this stage probably uh, eight, nine years ago. And she said she was at the hotel and she said the Lord spoke to her powerfully. She said it was so powerful she can only remember one other time in all of the years that she had been serving the Lord where the Lord had ministered to her as powerful. So two times she said. And one time, one of those two times was at the hotel, the Holiday Inn Express down here, on her way to do a service here. And say, so what did the Lord say? Well, the Lord spoke to Lois and said that the most powerful move of God will happen in this church. And I believe it's a broader word than just melody, but it was specifically for melody. And she said the most powerful time in this church, the po most powerful move of God in this church will happen when the older generation and the younger generation come together and work as one. And, you know, I really felt, Laura, last week that I, I don't, I'm hoping others took part in that, but I just kind of felt um, a, a leading uh, to repent for the way that the younger generation, every generation comes along. How many have children or grandchildren? I guess you'd have to have children to have grandchildren, huh? Uh, how many of when they start getting to that, that age where they know more than you, anybody ever experienced that before? You know, I've, I've watched all my children do that. Um, my son's, he's quite the pro. I was going to say, buddy's still in it. <laughs> buddy's quite the pro. He was doing something the other day. I said, wow, you did a good job. And he said, yeah, I'm him. I said, what is that? Some new, is that some new thing that I'm him? I'm that guy. I'm the one that, you know, whatever. But every generation that comes up. Uh, they always sense that they can do it better than the previous generation. But how many know that's not necessarily kingdom? That's not God's way of doing things. He doesn't say, oh, well, the younger generation, the older guys, they couldn't figure it out, so you guys are going to do it much better. Uh, no, he wants us to work together. Amen? But I think in recent years in, in church culture, I was talking to him. I never talked to him. I was talking to, I know of a pastor uh, in another state, and this is a move that I've seen. He said they have a policy in their church where no one above 35 can serve on their worship team. And I thought to myself, I get it. I get what you're trying to do. You want to have a young, hip, cool-looking whatever. But uh, you know what? That's kind of dumb if you ask me. You know, because what does that say to the older generation? Oh, we're not cool and hip, therefore we can't serve the Lord, right? We can't participate in, in that. I just don't see that in scripture. It's a cultural thing, right? So, you know, the Lord kind of put on my heart that we need, somebody needed to stand in and say, I'm sorry as a whole for the body of Christ. And then Laura, we got into some of those things. I thought it was the most awesome thing. I, I saw your dad back there. He was jumping up and down, getting excited about it. But we read some of the statistics. You could read some of those of the older generation, how they, uh, it was really a blessing to me. Laura said, hey, this gives me a vision for moving forward. Uh, yeah, as a younger person, um, I thought, man, there's a whole lot to look forward to. It's like once you hit 40, it's like people go, oh, you're over the hill, and da 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 And I'm like, who are you? Like, I do not receive that. So these statistics were incredibly encouraging to me as a young, youthful woman. Um, but it said uh, an extensive study in the United States found that the most productive age in human life is between 60 to 70 years of age. So Glory that to God! 60 to 70. That's good news, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> and hey, so don't eat that chocolate bar you got today. We ain't trying to. No, we need to start getting healthier, don't we? <laughs> There we go. The second most productive stage of the human being is from 70 to 80 years of age. That's just wonderful. 
And then the third most productive stage is from 50 to 60 years of age. So between 50 to 80, you've got the top three most productive years of your life that you are living. It's so good. So basically, I think those statistics that we've been saying it forever, you know, that just because you're over a certain age doesn't mean that God's done with you. Amen. Yeah, that's and, a lie. That, yeah. that that whole retirement. I remember Dad preached many years ago, and he said, "It's not uh, re- time to retire. It's time to refire." Re-fire. That was his message. That was his his message to the older generation. He's like, "It's not time to retire. It's time to refire." So maybe some of you are sitting in here, and maybe you've been on the sidelines for a little too long. I'm just encouraging you that this is the time. It's never too late. But I'll tell you, we we need you. This my generation needs you. Uh, Miss Miss Pam Lake uh, texted me last night. It just I, tears were streaming out my face as I read your text. It was just an incredibly encouraging text to me. And she's you know in one of the most productive years of her life right now. And she reached out to me and said, "I was praying for you. This is what the Lord said." And I'm like, "Thank you, Jesus, that I have." people like this in my life that are pouring into me. I mean, I remember as a teenager, I had people because I grew up in this church. I had people in this church that they would, they would bless me. You know, they would send me on mission trips. They would send me to youth camp. And I remember when, and I've told this story before and that's okay. It bears repeating. But when I attended Oral Roberts University in Oklahoma, far from home. I mean, I was a homebody. So it was very challenging for me to go all the way out to a place that I knew the Lord had sent me. But I had several ladies, older ladies from this church that they would send me monthly letters, just a little note of encouragement. And normally they'd have like a $25 check in there, which was like gold for a college student. I'm like, yes. Uh, But just to know that there were people back home that were praying for me and that were just speaking life and encouraging words into me, it meant everything. And it just, it was like, I kept that that bridge. There was a bridge between the young and the old. That's so good. And and that really kind of brings up kind of one of the things, Laura, that we were talking about the other day, you know, in moving forward in, because it is really, there's so many words and scriptures and prophetic words that have come forth about the next generation. And really, we've got to kind of build around that. We've got to actually kind of take steps. And uh, you and I were talking the other day, just you know, what What can we do as a church? And we've talked about a lot of different things. Obviously, you mentioned something to me the other day that you always talk about, and it really kind of ministers to my heart, is, you know, when it comes to, like, children's ministry. You, you What did you say to me the other day that you said, they had said something about if somebody would serve once a month in oh children's, gosh. yeah. Well, there's, there's um, I mean, like Miss Debbie Mixon, who is the one of the older generation, Um, And she is just committed to teaching these young ones. You know, she was kind of on the sidelines for a while. And then something began to stir on the inside of her, and she got refired. And she came to Cali and was like, I got to get over there. I got to teach these young ones. But she's over there on a weekly basis, and it's like she needs to be fed and strengthened and encouraged and part of the body. And Cali kind of had a vision. She said, you know, if we could just have some people step in, you know, during like the worship portion, you know, so like somebody like a Miss Debbie, Miss Linda Walker, who is in that older generation, she's over there right now serving our toddlers and pouring into them. But if they had that opportunity to just be at least during the worship portion, and then they'd be able to walk over to their class and, you know, change out for the person that's there during the worship. I mean, it would just, it would, it would bring life and encouragement. I mean, that's just an easy, practical way, um, you know, that you could get involved. And I love that. And I'm thinking, you know, there could be, you know, somebody here online saying, you know, the, oh, this is kind of when I get, because people have the idea, Laura, I want to come to church so I can get fed. Which is fine. You know, yeah. there is an element of being together yes. and, and being fed. Yes. And, and that's, too, I will say this, though. That's why we started Monday school. Yeah. Monday school is powerful. It is. I mean, it's rich. It's deep. Um, it's so much more than on a Sunday morning. So if you've, you know, never come out on a Monday night before or whatever, and, you know, if you've, 
If you're used to going home after work on a Monday, it might be a little challenging to change your routine up. But I'll tell you, if you just make that commitment and just say, you know what, I'm going to I'm, for three months, I'm going to commit to coming to Monday school, and let let's see if I'm a better person at the end of this three months. You know, let's see, let's see where I'm at. But uh, you you won't leave disappointed because it's yeah. just it's a time of refueling and just and being one stirred. Of, one of the the key kind of principles about the body of Christ is we're that we're a body. We and each it's not, have a supply. That's right. To Everybody bring. has a supply. Turn that's your neighbor it. and tell them you have a supply. Yeah. You have a supply of the spirit to bring. That's what makes every part. Okay, I said one <laughs> word. What are we catching up with lunch plans out there? No. Every part of your physical body has a purpose. Yeah. Amen. And if the Lord's called us here, that this is yeah. we're not. This is not a church shopping church, you know. This is, hey, if the Spirit of God's called you here, you yeah. belong here, which means you have a supply. And part of that is, yes, you can sit and be fed. Part of it, you know, could be natural, uh, you know, financially speaking. Maybe, you know, do you do serve, but it's so much more than just natural things. Yeah. There is a supply in your spirit as a member or part of the body. Yeah. That God has called you to bring. That's why he called you here. I always wondered why, like, during special services or, you know, people would travel to a conference, why it seemed like the energy and the atmosphere and the presence there was just, like, so much more intensified and so much stronger. And I realized after many years, well, it's because there was such anticipation and expectation. These people, like, they're traveling. They're going. They're hungry. And they're bringing their, really, their supply of the the spirit to that meeting and so really their each, faith, their faith. Their, so yeah. each time we gather as a group of believers it shouldn't just be well it's just another sunday or this is just oh, what we do oh, or perfect. let's drag the little ones out but no it's like get prayed up yeah. get ready come hungry like you know what there's going to be somebody here that's going to receive their healing today yes. there's going to be somebody yes. here that's going to receive the answer that they've been looking for somebody here is going to be restored you know restoration whatever it may be and so if you come Gosh. with that that attitude and that expectation, you'll see more moves of the Spirit yeah. in services like this on a weekly basis. I agree. And I'm just seeing, as you're saying that, next door, even when it comes to, like, the nursery and toddlers and children's yeah. uh, and even, you know, youth stuff that we do. Laura, I just I saw, like, a, a, a individual just ministering. Yeah. To those young ones, because truth is, it. I mean, uh, there, we live in a fallen world, yeah. and you know, it's, I'm not thinking just naturally or even mentally. There are spiritual forces that are arrayed against you Absolutely. and I, against this next They're generation. Organized. How powerful is it, Laura, to see someone that's actually bringing their supply? Because yeah. most people in the past, uh, you know, I'm not trying to get you logged up for uh, serving <sighs> children's ministry. I'm just trying to give you an example. But imagine you bring a supply of the spirit in there and you're counteracting and overcoming That's so it. many of the things that these children have to deal with That's on it. a daily basis. Yep. You're speaking God's word yeah. over them. You're you're ministering to them. I could yeah. just see, you know, as you're just praying, praying in yeah. the spirit over them, praying over their future, praying over, you know, mm. whatever the plans of God are for them. them with faith How and love. powerful is that? Yeah. To see, and that is a supply. That is. That is a supply, folks. Listen, if if Jesus would have said, "Hey, it's not a body," he said, "I've given a pastor that's in Christ." Mm -hmm. No, that's not the body of Christ. Yeah. That's just one member of the body—a pastor yeah. or an evangelist or whatever fivefold ministry. But every member of the body has some supply to bring. Yeah. Amen. Turn to your neighbor again and tell him you have a supply. Have a supply. And it's so important. So we ask ourselves, Laura, what is our part? Yeah. Well, we've got to pray. I've been saying this for so long. I can't even remember where I started saying it. But it's like we don't have to make up a plan. God already has a plan. Amen. You don't have to decide, oh, I'm going to start doing this. No, just discern in your heart through prayer. Amen. And take some direction from maybe those that are a few steps further along in the things of God. I, I've gone up to people many times and said, hey, I, I feel like you would maybe fit in this role. Well, that's my job as a pastor. I can see oftentimes when other people can't see themselves where they belong. That's a good thing. You know, hey, maybe my pastor's seeing something from the Lord. You think? Do you think so? 
Do you think maybe your pastor would hear from the Lord and try to push you in a direction where maybe God's plan uh, has you as a part of it? Is anybody here? But even then, on your own, you don't have to figure out everything that God wants to do in and through you. All you need to do is discern. Hey, I feel led today. That's what we talked about on Monday school. I am a spirit. Amen. Yes. I'm a spirit. This whole thing yeah. is spiritual, yeah. which is. means the spirit of God that dwells in you is going to lead you to the place where you will be most fruitful. Yeah. Amen. And where your supply actually connects. Yeah. Is anybody it. listening? That's it. Now, listen, I know I, I'm, I'm, I, only, I know where people fit a lot of times, and I know when people aren't listening and they have a bad attitude. And there's a few in here that are saying, and you don't realize, but you're actually, you're, you're blinded because you said, I've already heard this sermon. I've already tried this. I don't get along with people. I, I can't know what you are is you want to do what you want to do. Yeah. You want to do like Papa said about Isabella when she was two or three. Papa said, I need you to do this. And Bella said, no, Papa, I don't want to do what you want me to do. I want to do what I want to do. Well, how many know Bella in that one sentence pretty much summed up fallen man. I don't want to do what you want me to do, God. I don't want you to. I don't want to do what you want me to do, Pastor. I want to do what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Well, how I many call that? That's called carnality. That's called just flesh rule. That we're selfish, and that's okay. We've all been in in and out of that, right? But man, to hear from the Spirit of God and say, "I am called to do that," yeah. right? I'm called to do that. I put. I love putting together puzzles. I'm just that person. And that was something my grandmother and I would do together. And so I just, when I can find time, I will sit there. And it's like, that's the best day of my life to put a puzzle together. And I put one together the other day. It was beautiful. It was um, all these different um, uh, works of art by Monet and Van Gogh and different artists. I mean, it was beautiful. And it was a nice big one. I like the large pieces now. Just as I've gotten older, I enjoy the hey, larger Laura, pieces. Hey, your best is yet to come. <laughs> So I'm piecing it together and it's filling up my entire dining room table. And then as I'm getting closer to the end, I'm starting to panic because I'm like, I don't think there's enough pieces to finish my puzzle. And sure enough, there were a couple pieces missing. And I thought, I, I not left this table. Like my dog didn't jump up and like eat the piece. And, you know, so I'm searching everywhere and under, you know, underneath the table just to make sure and there were no other pieces. I mean, I got gypped out of this beautiful puzzle. And as I was staring at this puzzle, all I could focus on were the missing areas. And it just really detracted from the absolute beauty of the puzzle, you know, in in, in its completeness. And why? Because there were a few pieces that were missing. And I feel like that's the way it is in the body of Christ is that, you know, if people are just, for whatever reason, you know, I'm dealing with life. I mean, I, I, life is life. And you, if you're not careful, you can really get caught up in the busyness and the chaos and the stress and the pressure and everything else. But see, that's what's competing. The world is competing and is trying to get our attention and our focus from the place that we're called from from that from that uh you know being that piece right there fitting in that puzzle and it's like are we gonna just give in and cave in and just go i'm too busy i'm too stressed i got too many kids i got too many errands i got too much this and that because i think every single one of us could probably give that as our excuse or are we going to press through the noise are we going to push through and go those are just distractions that are keeping me from the place. Because I'll tell you, when you plant yourself in the place that God has called you, there's a deeper work that takes place. It's not just you filling a role or you know being a blessing, but God does something supernatural in you. And again, I grew up in this church, and it seemed like every way, you know, every every at every stage of life, I was involved in some area serving. Some areas I enjoyed serving in. Others I did not care to serve in, but they needed me and my, you know, dad or mom would go, you're serving. So I'm like, all right, I'm serving. You know, I guess I get no choice in the matter. And I didn't, but I'll tell you. Maybe we should start doing that. (laughs) 
<laughs> our kids, they have no choice. Not our kids. How about these kids out here? We'll do these guys. But uh, I'll tell you, a supernatural work was done on the inside of me. Not only did my roots grow deeper, but it was like that that in that endurance that patient endurance i'm able to receive things step into things walk in things now that i would not have been able to receive walk in and obtain had i not just kind of positioned myself and just kind of allowed the lord to do a deep work in my life and i am so much uh you know what's the song i shall not be moved you know i shall not i kind of feel like that's like my life motto like i'm just i'm not moved i'm not i'm not moved by anything and there's been things that have tried to move me and there's been times that i could have been moved you know my feelings my emotions and things that wanted to move me but i'm just like no I, i i know my place I, I know my position. I know where where God is leading me, and that's far too valuable and far too precious than to give in to all of this over here. You know, man. I just I'm really feeling kind of stirred right now, just to kind of almost prophesy. But I'm I'm stirred with Matthew chapter six. Uh, the Lord uh, laid this on my heart over the weekend, and I just. Obviously, if, if you don't know that verse, uh, says King James says, "Seek ye first the kingdom of God, Amen, and His righteousness." I think the Amplified says, uh, "His way of being and doing right." Uh, seek first His kingdom, His way of being and doing right, and then what? All these other things that He just described will be added to you. Uh, and I just, I felt super stirred uh, this weekend. You can come on up, Travis. I'm just going to minister for a minute. But I, I just felt super stirred this weekend about the importance of this season and this, this mandate um, on this church to reach this next generation. And I got to be honest with you, I'm just so touched to see... Um, even in just the last several weeks, what looked like it was going to be a setback has actually been a setup of sorts and how the Lord has just kind of is moving different ones and different pieces and parts of this plan into place. Uh, one of our ministers that we work with and have for years said uh, recently, he said, Darren, sometimes it's not that your faith is lacking or that you're not, you know, believing God for whatever it is that he's spoken to you. He said this, and I thought this was so profound and and part of God's wisdom. And he said, sometimes God has to deal with other parts and pieces, and that takes time. Uh, You know, Laura, well, I can't get into that, but there was just a, a story years ago how Just one thing had happened years earlier, and then another thing uh, happened years after that, and then something else years after that. And then at the end of this very long bit of stretch of time, there was some like just massive uh, breakthrough was actually in the area of finances. And it that would not have been able to happen unless that one thing had happened 40 or 50 years before that. And then something happened at the 40 year mark, and then at the 30, 25, it's like God's always working his plan. So don't be discouraged. I just want to minister to you this morning. Don't be discouraged and think or say in your heart, you know, the Lord's forgotten about me. You know, Pastor Darren, I hear you. Maybe you're, uh, uh, you know, older in years. You say, Pastor Darren, I've been believing God for so long. I can't even remember when I started, but I just don't know anymore. I don't know that the Lord's actually moving. No, I want to tell you the Lord is moving. You pick, you pick that back up. You pick that that, that promise up, whatever word that God's given you, because that's part of your supply. That's part of, uh, of your supply that, that you need to bring. Amen. And I just feel that this, this is a time. Amen. I listened. I was in the car yesterday and we have little thumb drives of different ministers and brother Hagen had been on. And when I got back in the vehicle, Shekinah Glory was on and I listened to testimony after testimony they had older people they were about my age and they were testifying 
uh, the first time that they had met Shekinah Glory, that they had met Mama Cindy, one was 14 years old. Another was 18 years old. And they talked about the change. One was 14. She said she was in the bathroom. She was a pastor's kid in the bathroom stall smoking a cigarette. <laughs> and she was ministered to that night. And that was, you know, 30 or so years previously. And I've thought over the years just regarding like Shekinah Glory, this, this gift that comes into this house that it's always been the children and the youth that have been so drawn to their ministry. And I think there's a couple reasons why. One, they do flow in, in the gifts of the Spirit. But two, their heart is just burning for this next generation. And I think the children and the teenagers recognize that. I recognize that as a nine-year-old, as a 10-year-old, as an 11-year-old, when year after year would just pull me in, draw me in by the love of God. I mean, I was just enveloped in the love of God by these older ladies that just poured into me and would speak life into me and would say, you're gonna make it. You know, there's bright days ahead. The call of God is on your life. And it was some of those words that would sustain me, that kept me moving forward even when times got difficult. And so I'm just encouraging this older generation today to look back and don't say they, they won't listen. They No, no, they recognize love. They respond to love. And I love what Cliff Graham said many years ago to us as we were youth pastors for many years. He said, don't ever look at the, the faces of teenagers because that could discourage you. He said, just because their face may reflect one thing does not reflect what's going on on the inside. And I've seen teenager after teenager look like a hardened shell on the outside, and then they begin to break on the inside. There is a work. There is a work that we are called to do together. Mm. And I just see the lines forming as, as in like a, a, in a in military setting. And it's like each line has their job. This line is to pray. This one's to give. This one's to serve. This one's to uh, uh, to reach back and, and and to write letters or to uh, to you know to be the hands and the feet. And I see us working together in unison because maybe not every house has this mandate on them, but this church does. This church has this mandate on it to reach the young. And so it's not a surprise that there's been attack after attack after attack yeah. in yeah. this area. Yeah. And some have moved out of their position. Mm. They have moved out of their spot. And it's because of deception. It was not the will of God. It was not because of this or that. But they gave in to deception. But the Lord is saying now that he's bringing in reinforcements. He's bringing in the right people at the right time who will not be moved, who will look forward, and who will get the job done. So be encouraged today. Lock arms with your neighbor and know that we're headed somewhere glory to God as a body our greatest our brightest our most fruitful and productive days of Melody Church are right before us glory, glory to God, God. Thank you, glory to God. come on let's just thank him glory for a minute to God. Glory to God. Some of you in here may go. Some of you may be in here visiting. Some of you, this may be your third or fourth visit. And you go, why am I here? What, what, what's on my purpose? Some of you have come in the last year. Because there's been a lot of new faces that have come in this last year. I'm telling you, you have been strategically sent here on assignment. It is not an accident that you felt drawn to this place. That you felt the Lord leading you to this place. So right now, this moment, you may go, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know. I, I believe I'm just I'm releasing this now the Lord's gonna begin to show you you're gonna know exactly the place 
that you fit, the position that you're supposed to hold. And I just see that as you honor that, as you're obedient to the leading of the Lord, things that have burdened you, things that have just nagged you, things that have been a, a struggle, the Lord is actually working and moving on your behalf. And he's taking care of some things yeah. for yeah. you. Glory. And there's going to be, too, a harvest connected to all that, Laura. Glory. There's harvest. There's a release. We've been, the Lord's been dealing with me all week about finances and breakthrough. And, and I, I just, I don't talk about it enough. It's kind of a, a something deep inside of me. But there, this is a season of harvest because it's not even about that. The Lord's in his wisdom and in his plan. He's given you and I opportunity after opportunity all of these years to be, to sow faithfully into the work of God. And, you know, it's like, um, um, oh gosh, who was it? Uh, I think it was uh, Mark Hank. I was, Mark Hankins' dad, Pastor B.B. Hankins said, God doesn't always uh, pay on Friday, but God always has a payday. And there's actually, we're coming into a time where there's a culmination, a tipping point of seeds that have been sown. This is Laura, I read that Amos uh, passage of scripture there, the reaper's gonna overtake the sower. Uh, and that is, we're, we're in that. Somebody needs to get a hold of this in their heart. Stop trying to do it all on your own. I'm gonna prophesy over you today. The Lord already has a plan. Just listen for him and do what he says. It's not that hard. It's like we used to sing, when I was in children's church, we'd sing, trust and obey, there's no other way. That's where we are right now. Stop trying to look into the world's way of doing things. The Lord said, and he's been saying here, look, don't consider not the things of old. I'm doing a brand new thing. And that was some big stuff that, they, that he, they, he did for them up to that point. I mean, big stuff. And he said, don't even give that a second look. Look forward because there's a new thing that the Lord's doing in this earth. And there is an anointing right now. And I'm specifically, it's the younger and the older generation, but specifically in that group, I think that's why one of the reasons the Lord highlighted that group of 50 to 80, I, I'm going to just uh, say that again. You're stepping into and are in your most fruitful season. And part of that is there's the Lord's trying to get things to you. And like one pastor said, if God can get it through you, he can get it to you. And it's okay. Just understand it's not about you. You are a vessel that the Lord is choosing to work through. So I want to say this, what the Lord said last year towards the end of the year, be humble, be a vessel of honor, be humble and open to the Lord doing it because the world wants to take all the credit. They, they, the worldly mindset is, I did this, I put my hands to this, you know, I'm, I'm going to get all the credit. No, the Lord's saying, if you just step aside, get get beside yourself, get, a, get away from yourself and making it about yourself. And the Lord said, just let me move in this supernatural way because it's been spoken in, in recent times and in years, over the years, that this is a supernatural time. And the humble are hearing now and they're stepping aside from their works as it says in the scripture that we're supposed to cease from our own works, right? We're supposed to hear from him, yield to him. The spirit of God is moving upon even some in this room and some watching online. He's giving you specific things right now. And he's saying, I've been trying to tell you this, but you want to do it your way. And the Lord saying, now look at what your way has produced. And the Lord said, if that's what you want to continue having in your life, then keep doing it your way. But if you'd like to have something that you've, oh, glory to God. If you'd like to have something you've never had before, then allow me to do something I've never done before, which is flow through you. Glory to God. Somebody receive that today. Lift your hands toward heaven and receive. Step to the side. Glory to God. Step to the side and let the Lord move. Glory to God. Oh, the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, let's just worship him for a moment. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, glory to God. Oh. 
It's a new season, and it's a new day. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, glory to God. Oh, what are the words of that song? It's a season of power and prosperity. Glory to God. It's a new season and it's a new day. Hallelujah. Oh, there's something about in the words of that song, your children's children. Hallelujah. Come on, just take a moment and just begin to pray over your children and their grandchildren. Pray over the ones in this community. Glory to God. We just need to take a minute here today. Oh, we speak life over this generation. Hallelujah. We bind the hand of Satan. Step into your place of authority. Step into your place of authority this morning. Exercise your authority, parents. Stop letting your children go into the world blindly. Exer I am here today because my mom and dad exercised authority over the devil. Glory to God. Stop allowing your children to go into the world blindly. Stand in the gap for them. Pray over them in the name of Jesus. We need to do that right now. Pray over this generation. Oh, some of you parents and grandparents, I, I'm, not, I'm saying this because I love you as a pastor, but you need to repent. You need to repent to the Lord. You need to repent and say, I have allowed my children to walk right in through the gates of hell and not even cover them spiritually. Do you not know? The Spirit of God even says, do you not know that our fight is not with flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers? Do, do you not know? Your children need to be covered. When I would leave to go to school, my mom would break out the olive oil and she would go in my bedroom and anoint the doorpost, the bedpost. She'd anoint everything she could. Why? She, wanted to, she didn't want to allow and didn't allow the devil to have his way with my life. I should have been dead a long time ago if it was up to the devil. But he was bound by someone. Oh, glory to God. Lord, we speak, we speak. Come on, somebody. I need to hear some church people praying. Oh, oh, ho, ho, Lord. Come on, somebody. Oh, Lord, we humble ourselves this morning, Lord. Oh, we humble ourselves, Lord. Oh. Lord, remove the blinders from the eyes of this uh, younger generation, all generations in this area. Lord, thank you that the floodgates are opening. Continue to open the floodgates, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, come on. The Lord's saying, I need someone to stand in. I need you to take your place of authority in the spirit. Oh, the Spirit of God has said there have been many assignments uh, in prayer that I keep putting out, but many are not picking them up. Oh, it's like going to class and the teacher gives homework assignments. The Spirit of God is saying, I've been getting, I've been trying to get your attention. But like Laura said earlier, we're too distracted with the things of this world. Oh, but the Spirit of God saying, I'm giving you opportunity to listen and to humble yourself. This, uh, the Spirit of God said this to me or ministered this to me this weekend. He said, people need to take this seriously. This is serious. This is not business as usual. This is serious. The Spirit of God is saying, this is serious. We've got to take our place. The older and the younger coming together to see a mighty move of God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. He's, he's turning the hearts. Oh, He's turning the hearts. He's turning the hearts. 
Oh, he's turning the hearts of the fathers to their kids. Those that have been established in the ways of the Lord, he's turning, he's turning your heart, oh, towards the next generation. He's turning your heart, oh, allow your heart to be turned. Allow your focus to be shifted. Oh, because the way of the world says it's about you, but the Spirit of God says it's about me and my plan. So allow me. Folks, I'm telling you, I feel there's a little bit more of a sternness right now in my heart. And I tell you, Laura's been saying this by the Spirit of God. It's been in my heart. Your decisions will affect your children and your grandchildren. It will affect the, it will affect the next. These things have eternal consequence. This is not, are you going to retire? Are you going to have any money? Do you need a nice car? Do you need a newer? None of that is important. And the Lord said by his word today that if you put his kingdom first, all those things will be added to you as a, as a result anyway. That's just his way. His way is you do it his way and then you get his blessing. Oh, we've got to come up, church. Somebody say, I received that. Lord, we, let's, let's just, Lord, we give you ourselves today because you're turning the hearts. Oh, you're turning the hearts of the fathers to the children, Lord. Mm -hmm. Bless your name, bless your name. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. I think we just need to sit here for a minute. Some, of you, some, some are getting some downloads right now by the Spirit of God. Oh, you need to be diligent too and write those things down. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's turning the hearts. He's turning the hearts. He's turning the hearts. Fathers to the children. He's turning the hearts. He's turning the hearts. He's turning the hearts of the fathers to the children. Let him turn your heart. Mm, let him guide your steps. Mm, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. He's 
turning hard. He's turning hard. Of the Father to the children, He's turning hard. He's turning. As your uh, heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I just want to give you an opportunity today. Uh, maybe you're here, you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. You know, man, that's this is not about just coming to church. Amen. It's about being born again and baptized into his body. That's what makes you part of the church. That's spiritual. That's not just a physical, I got out of bed and got to church, or I read my Bible, or... I know the Ten Commandments, or I know the 12 disciples that, no, that's fine. This is spiritual. Amen. The Bible says that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. He, he came. God came. Amen. And he fulfilled that holy law established in Israel he fulfilled God's law and then God put our sin nature and joined it to him himself he, he became our fallen nature why so that he could die amen the Bible says he was crucified he died he was buried he dealt with that fallen nature that sin nature now the scripture says if any man or woman be in Christ he's a new creature hallelujah we don't need new church members we need new creatures we're a new creature if any man be in Christ he's a new creature how do you get in Christ well Romans 10 says if we confess with our mouth Jesus as Lord and we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. The Bible says that we're saved. It said, no one who calls on the name of the Lord, he, he will, everyone who calls is saved. Amen. God's no respecter of persons. Amen. Like this, they sang earlier today, his love never fails. So maybe you're here today or you're watching online and you never made Jesus the Lord of your life. Oh, Let's do that together. Let's do what the Bible says. Let's make a confession of faith in him. Can we do that together as a church? Amen. I'll tell you, there's somebody, a few that are watching online today. And I'll tell you, like one minister said, the Lord's going to do what he does best right now in this moment. He's going to save people. He's going to recreate your human spirit. And you're going you're gonna to sense and know, you're going to have a witness of the spirit that your nature has changed. Amen. And I mean, it's important that you find and get connected to a local body then because that's where you belong. You're now a member of the body. Let's declare this confession of faith together today. Everybody here, if you're watching online as well, say this with me. Say, I believe that Jesus is Lord. I believe he died for me. I believe he died as me. He shed his blood for me. So right now, I declare that Jesus is Lord. He's my Lord. I'm his child. He's my father. Glory to God. Say it with me. Say, I'm born again. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift your hands toward heaven and thank God for it. I'm born again. Hallelujah. I'm a new creation. Glory to God. I love that song we used to sing years ago. I'm a new creation. Glory to God. I'm a brand new man. All things are passed away. I've been born again. More than a conqueror. Glory to God. I'm a new creation. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and tell them you're a new creation. Amen. 
If you're with us online and prayed that, reach out to us there and let us know so we can help you get started living for God. If you don't have a church and you're in our area, we'd love to have you. Amen. There's a lot of awesome, awesome stuff here uh, happening as the body of Christ is being strengthened. Amen. How many received the word of the Lord today? Well, you, you got to find your part. You don't have to make it up. You just have to find out what it is that God's already called you to do. That's one of the best things about God. He's already got a plan. Amen. Somebody say amen to that. Amen.